Hello and welcome to another episode of TrackCast. I'm your host once again, Rich Hansen. And today I want to talk to you about what is moving the pin closer and further away from my PAP due to ball reaction. We've talked to you guys a little bit about RG and differential, and we've taken you through the product line to help pick which ball is best for your game. But now we need to look at the layout. And so now we're going to focus on pin to PAP, your positive access point, and how that's going to affect the ball motion for you in the lanes. All right, so today our focus is on the layout of the bowling ball, and specifically how far are we gonna place the pin to our PAP. When we wanna decide a layout, we kinda of need to know what that does to the ball in general first before we decide what we wanna do for a pin to PAP distance. Where we place the pin according to our axis helps dictate how much length the ball is gonna to wanna to see, or how much skid you're gonna see through the front part of the lane, and also how much overall flare potential we're gonna see. When the pin is closer to our axis, that is placing the core more on its side, and what we call low RG position. That's gonna naturally allow the ball to rev up quicker and create less flare potential. Because now that core is in a stable position, so there's not a lot of fight in that core to find stability because it's pretty much already there. So early revs, smooth back end. If we place the pin more perpendicular to our axis, what we would be six and three quarter, the further we get closer to six and three quarter, the core is more in a high RG position, standing straight up, so it wants to tumble more. And as the core tumbles, it wants to get down the lane easier. But we're also reducing flare potential because that high RG position and low RG position are stable points. There's no fight in the core to make the ball want to find a stable point because it's already there. Now, placing the core in between, what we call a 45 degree angle, that would be three and three eighths of your axis. It's the old term we used to call it, we used to call it leverage. That creates the most imbalance in the core. So when the, the pin is three and three eighths from your axis, those are most imbalanced. So the core is gonna to wanna to fight the hardest. So you're gonna see the most flare potential at the bowling ball. It isn't always the best to have, have either one of them. It's just which one is gonna match up to the ball you've chose and is the best for the lane condition you're looking for. And there's a whole ray in between. We can place a pin anywhere from zero to six and three quarter. We're just gonna choose produce different ball reaction. All right, so now let's look at a couple of examples. Uh, I have two balls in front of me. One is this uh, heat lava. This is a shiny pearl with a symmetrical core. It's naturally gonna to wanna to get down the lane and produce a, a decently strong back end reaction. If I bought this bowling ball, I wouldn't necessarily wanna drill it with a shorter pin to my axis because it's defeating the whole point of the bowling ball. The point of the bowling ball is to get on the lane and have a good back end reaction. If I place the pin closer to my axis, what we call low RG position, I'll, now I'm trying to make it roll early. And it doesn't really make sense for this bowling ball. So I would choose something that would enhance this ball's natural, uh, what it wants to do on the lane. So this ball naturally wants to get down the lane and have a strong back end. So I'm gonna place this pin somewhere in that four and a half to five and a half inch pin distance. For me, I actually chose here a five and a half inch pin because I really wanna get the ball down the lane really, really easily and have a good back end reaction, some for medium to drier lane conditions. So this one particular pin here is five and a half inches to this bowler's axis or my axis. So we're gonna see a five and a half inch pin. Once again, we're placing the core a little bit closer to that high RG position. So we're gonna see, see more lope through the front helps get the ball down the lane, and it's actually slightly reducing this ball's flare potential. You would naturally see about four inches of flare potential on this bowling ball if we drilled it the strongest position, which is three and three eighths. As we go closer to that higher RG position, we're reducing the flare and we're creating more length, okay? So now I'm probably gonna see about two and a half to three inches of flare potential, uh, but still strong enough for what I'm looking for. All right, so now let's look at this Triton Elite. Now this is a sanded symmetrical ball has a very similar flare potential as, as, as the heat lava. It has about four inches or so, four, four and a half inches of flare potential. Depending on how I drill this, will determine how much I'm actually gonna see out of the ball because the ball is designed to give you four and a half, but that's if you drilled it at three and three eighths. The further from my axis, I'm gonna get more length, reduce the flare. The closer my axis, I'm gonna get less flare again because it's getting close to stable, but also create an earlier ball reaction. So this one I've put at four inches because I want something that's gonna be strong, in the oil. I'm a higher rate player, so I like symmetrical balls myself, um, but I want something that's strong. It's going to be good for, for medium to heavy oil lanes, and it's probably be the first ball in my bag. So I've chose a four inch pin. So now, with this ball's four to four and a half inch flare potential, I'm going to get that full amount. I'm maximizing this ball's flare potential to give me as much fresh surface as the ball roll, as it rolls down the lane to give me the, the greatest hook potential. So this four inch pin, I'm going to get moderate length because once again, closer my axis makes the ball want to hook sooner further from my axis makes the ball want to go longer. So I've picked a spot about right in between at four inches. So I'm gonna get moderate length, large flare potential. I've got a ball that's sanded, that's designed to give me good traction, and I've got the perfect ball 
for my fresh lane with more oily conditions. And then vice versa, I have this perfect complement to it. As this lane starts to dry out, say game one, game two of league, the lane starts to transition, I can move over my heat lava, which naturally wants to go longer, but it has that five and a half inch pin, which naturally makes the ball want to go down even further down the lane and give me a better back end reaction. I've got a perfect one, two compliment for myself that I should be able to get through a standard league night and see, go through any transition that I see in the lane. All right, so there you have it. Another episode of TrackCast. Hopefully you found this information about pin to PAP distance useful and helpful for you. Um, in future episodes, we're going to talk about mass bias placement and what that does to your ball reaction. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and, and stay tuned for future episodes of TrackCast where we'll try to give you the best information we can and help you improve as a bowler.